Hello everyone, my name is Bra Mithra, and my channel has focused on playing uh, Kingdom Death Monster. It is a great board game, which I highly suggest that everyone at least tries at least once if you're into like Dungeons and Dragons or, or you know, really long term investment games. You know, even some video games. I would suggest some video game players come and try Kingdom Death Monster. So that is what my channel has been pretty much devoted to. Um, my last, my most recent episode of uh, my playthrough of Kingdom Death, I decided to become more creative, and I really enjoyed it. And I've always just wanted to find other ways to be creative on my channel and share the things that I absolutely love and I just want to share with people and have a fun time. And Kingdom Death is so linear and focused, it's hard to really find that creativity. You have to create it for yourself. Kingdom Death is not hard to do that. It's very um, something you can you can very like dig your deeps and dig your teeth into the lore and stuff. So it's very immersive in that way. You you could definitely find stories to tell. It's very narrative, but um, again, it's very linear, and a lot of it gets repetitive. Also takes a long time to play, and that means it takes a long time to edit, and I really want to just, you know, find something else that's maybe quicker, more fun to do in a shorter period of time that I can edit, and, you know, just put it on, and again, just share what I loved and I've always loved, and, you know, boards, board games like Kingdom Death Monster were influenced by all kinds of outside media to the board game industry, and I wanted to do, you know, if I was going to bring something else to the channel, I wanted to make sure it was something, you know, expected. Something that, you know, people who like Kingdom Death will also enjoy. So, you know, I wanted to take the route that was pretty obvious. So, I want to... Ugh. Wow, this game is super heavy. It's just as heavy as Kingdom Death, probably. Whew. Oh, man, let me get it out of here. I know this game is... Ugh, so crazy. I totally... Ah, this game is... Oh, get this out of here. Oh, that was hard. All right. Ugh. I know this is probably unexpected that anybody would ever, if you're talking about Kingdom Death, would ever want to do this game, but what am I talking about here? Is this... Is this the... Is this the one that I was... Uh, no, not this. I mean, this this is probably not very info. Ah, here it is. Again, I'm sure everybody expected this. It's Final Fantasy XI. This is a game that's... I mean, everybody probably assumed it was coming, obviously. It's very influential to a lot of people. Uh, this game is such a great, amazing game. I, I spent a lot of time playing this game. Um, and recently, I found ways that I could be more creative into it. And that's the world of the private servers. And I took a lot of time, you know, getting one ready, getting one built up, because I really wanted to play again. And this is the PS2 version. I played for a long time. I have the the first expansion I played, PS2, Chains Promethea, Trust is about Urgan. I even played into Wings of the Goddess on PS2. I think this was the last one that was released on PS2. I don't remember. I quit right around the time of Wings of the Goddess. Um, but I that game was super influential on me. I don't know... How influential, though? Uh, I don't think I've had anything... Could have been that influential. I mean, I don't think of anything else in any other ways that probably would have influenced me or this channel. Not that I can think of right now at the moment, at least. Well, uh, let's start playing. Alright, so here we are. This is Final Fantasy XI. Um, obviously, the intro was not meant to be taken seriously. Um, it was just a joke that I did. <laughs> but yeah, I will be playing Final Fantasy XI. Um, I don't... I think Final Fantasy XI probably influenced some of King of Death, but I mean, obviously, Final Fantasy XI is clearly influenced by Dungeons and Dragons. That's why I showed the book there. <laughs> I'm well aware of... The fact that Final Fantasy, most board games, most RPGs in general, they're all going to be influenced heavily by AD&D, or just Dungeons and Dragons, even the chainmail of the first version of it. But so yes, that was just a joke, obviously, with the Gloomhaven and all that. It was just a joke. 
Um, but I do really want to play Final Fantasy XI. Final Fantasy XI is a great game. Now, see here off on the right, they have all kinds of expansions. Like I said, I quit playing on the fourth expansion. Uh, so originally, the game was released in the U.S. Uh, with Rise of the Zillart included in the PS2 um, hard drive. You had to buy a PS2 hard drive to get this game. They made a specific thing for you to connect online and to install the game, to install the updates and everything. Um, I remember when I bought the uh, PS2 hard drive thing, I actually bought it to play Resident Evil Outbreak. Um, I didn't actually buy it to play Final Fantasy XI, but I ended up playing Final Fantasy XI and I loved it. I love Final Fantasy XI. It's such a great game. And I think, I think it would be really good for a game to just play over the long term, which is a lot similar to Kingdom Death. I think it's a game that lends itself... I, a lot of people I don't think ever really got to play Final Fantasy XI. And I think Final Fantasy XI lends itself... Again, this is a private server. I just want to say that this is a private server, and this will be... I don't even know what's on this. I don't even think I can do Treasures of Urgan content on this. Either way, it's gonna. I'm going to heavily mod the game because I think that will be fun. <laughs> but I think Final Fantasy XI was way ahead of its time. I know it came out before WoW, but I, I played WoW when WoW first launched. I was in the WoW beta, but I remember uh, the Final Fantasy XI was much... I, I liked that game. I liked it a lot better than WoW. WoW seemed like it was something totally different than Eleven, and which is fine, which is great. WoW's a great game too, but um, you could still play Final Fantasy XI. But the Final Fantasy XI, as it is now in 2020, which I is not the same as what this will be. But I think Final Fantasy XI was ahead of its time. I think a lot of single player games nowadays play a lot like what Final Fantasy would play, like if you played it solo. And that's what this is going to be. This is going to be a solo modded playthrough of Final Fantasy XI. This is basically what I'm going to try to do here is offline Final Fantasy XI. Um, and I think it lends itself really great to a lot of games nowadays. Like, I think it plays a lot like Witcher or a lot like Skyrim. This game plays a lot like those games. Um, it, like, the, the challenge and everything, it's all there. It's going to be definitely hard. And I'm going to play at the 75 cap era. So it's going to be Rise of Zillar, Chains of Promethea era. Uh, yeah, I don't think Blue Mage works. I don't think um, Puppet Master. I don't think the other job. I can't remember what the Corsair. That's not going to work. Wings of the Goddess has Dancer and... Um, uh, what else did Wings of the Goddess add? Dancer and something else. Now I don't even remember what else it added. Scholar. Dancer and Scholar. Um, like, I quit right around Wings of the Goddess. I did play Dancer when it came out. That's why I remember that when I played Scholar a little bit. But I'd say I quit. When I quit, it was right around the time of... the end of Treasures of Out Urgan. And when I say that was being that... Expansions, when they released in this game, they came out... Um, you know, it's, I'm going to create a character. So, let's get started. I'm going to make a... Mithra, phase six, obviously, because everyone was phase six, small, oh, hair A, small. Uh, I'm going to start as a thief, and let's see if we can come up with a name. I don't know what name to pick. Uh, we will try a name. Why is the keyboard not working? There we go. That looks like a good name. We'll pick that name. Um... I'm also going to start in Bastok. So you could start in the three cities, um, Winder, Sandoria, or Bastok. And depending on where you start it, it's the starting zone, the areas that you do it. It would be much more for an online game than it is in this. Much more involved in an online game rather than the solo experience, which is what I'm going to go for. Um, I'm picking Bastok for the NM. <laughs> that's outside the doors. So as you can see down here, there's a chat. Um, all that means is just the server I'm playing. It's, this is an old version as well. This is like, um, 
pretty sure it's Dark Star. Yeah, Dark Star. Um, Dark Star Project. I forget what its name. The name. I know it has since uh, changed into something else. So, but that's the one I'm running on now. As you can see here, so this is Bastic. Now, the way I'm moving here is a lot faster. I've edited the run speed. Uh, it's like three times the run speed, and <laughs> that is 100% necessary. Also, there is a mini map that's showing. That is from the, a plugin, the win, uh, Windower plugin, because this was before the game even had a windowed mode when this game came out, because it was designed to play on PS2 as well. Uh, so this is obviously on PC, this is not on PS2. Like I said, the intro was a little bit of a joke. Um, although when I did play, I did play on PS2. I eventually switched to PC probably a little bit before Treasures of Our Urgan came out. Uh, the reason why I continued to buy them on PS2 was because I had two accounts. Um, yeah, it was a weird game. You had to, like, mule stuff between your uh, characters, like... Multiple accounts was the fastest way of holding so much stuff because everything was so valuable and it was so hard to make money. <laughs> um, back, back, probably two thousand eight, two thousand nine. I think was probably when I quit. It sounds about right. So I played probably for six years. That means, yeah, I'd probably say I played this game for about six years. Um, so as I said, this is going to be botted, so the uh, mini-map that is not a standard thing. Uh, I also start with all maps. Uh, that's something I've edited. The maps normally would be something that you just have to find or buy. You didn't even get maps in this game. Uh, and I'm going to also play with a controller, a PS2 controller. Well, this is not a PS2 controller, but... It was designed to play that way. That was the way I learned. Even after I switched to PC, I still played on the controller. I think the game works remarkably well with the controller. Um, this is actually the controller I used in 2008. <laughs> I still have it. It still seems to work. I might have to switch. It's a little bit sticky sometimes going left on the D-pad. But, uh, yeah, this whole game was driven basically in menus. This is such an old school... I'm sure it probably doesn't even look like this now. But... Um, the other thing, 10 gil. We are going to start with 10 gil. Uh, it's going to be very hard to earn money. This is going to be really difficult. Um, I don't even know how I'm going to earn money. I have no, I'm going to have no auction house. Now, the reason why I say it's going to be uh, it's modded is because this also was not a thing. This, uh, the teleporting, is... I'm sorry, so set this as my home point. So in this game, when you had home points, you just respawn here. So now I'll respawn here if I ever die, which I probably will. Um, but I've enabled teleporting, and I think there's also nomad moogles enabled. And there's also this field of valor thing. I don't even know what half of this stuff is. Um, I played a little bit when I was setting up the uh, server to make sure it would work, to see if this would even be viable to do as a... Um, a solo playthrough, but I think it really will be. I think it's going to be really fun. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm going to get a thing called Signet cast on me, which will allow me to get nation points. Um, and that's like a, a currency I can spend to buy gear. Now, as you can see, it shows up here at the top left, and it's six hours it will last for. Um, but this is... These, the six hours thing is a thing I had to do, enable with, uh, you had to use chat commands. Like I said, a lot of this game is just chat commands, so I forget how. I even do, oh, my keyboard's not working, there we go. So, uh, I think it was, you do like recast or something, I think it was this. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> I don't remember the command. I had to look it up. <laughs> so that, I'm not going to use the... Um, there are, obviously, with this window, there's always plugins. I know MMOs now probably all have plugins. I remember WoW. One of the reasons why I didn't like WoW when I originally played it at launch was they had all kinds of plugins. Basically, I don't know, I feel like the plugins 
pretty much just I mean they they're they're very helpful. I'm not gonna say they're like cheating, but I think they basically are. <laughs> they're kind of like cheating. That's at least how I view them. Uh, just you know, yeah, well, whatever with plugins. <laughs> um, so here we'll step out into the leveling zone. Now I've also adjusted the amount of experience that will be gained uh, for each mob that you kill. Normally, it was a very weird system that it had. Um, I'm just all this stuff is going to be just off the top of my head. The other great thing about this is I'm going to tr this. What I'm trying to do is play as I played when I played the game. So this to me is just like 2007. It's like. 13 years later, I'm just walking right back into 2007, and I'm going to try to play that game the way it was that I remember. Um, so if I, I'm not, I've been looking stuff up, I'm just going to go off the top of my head from what I remember in 2007, which was, I think it was IT, IT+, plus, IT++, plus plus, and then I think it was T, DC, um, EM, EP? I think I think that's what it was. So what that stands for is IT++ was the hardest, which was incredibly tough with high defense and high attack, I think is what it was. So that's the plus plus. IT++ plus would be incredibly tough with high defense. Uh, and then just in regular incredibly tough. And then there would be a decent challenge. Or no, tough. Just regular tough. Then decent challenge then even match, then easy prey. There might have been another one in there, and decent challenge and even match might be flip-flopped, I don't remember, so I'll show you what I'm talking about. See, so when you check a monster, it tells you this is a even match, and it seems, so this would be EM+, plus, and it seems to have high defense. Let's see, this one is, seems like an even match with high defense, Even match high defense, they're all going to be probably you know, whatever. Uh, so that's how you decided if you could get experience from something. If something checked as too weak to be worthwhile, you will not gain experience from it. And I, you also are ineligible to get beastman seals or crystals off of it, if I remember correctly. So let's uh, let's just get started on leveling. Um, a lot of this is just going to be me talking about how much I love this game. <laughs> so with these field manuals, this was never in when I played the game. This is basically just gonna help me level. Um, let's go ahead and uh, read about individual training. So then you get like these pages and they they list monsters that you could fight and they give you in money and gill for beating them once a day, I think it is or something. So page one, this one says the information on the following instructs you to defeat the following six members of the B family. And then the target level range is 1 to 6. I have no idea what that even means. Uh, this game was notoriously bad at, like, telling you anything at all. <laughs> even as much as delivering, like, the mail to someone. Like, an NPC would just be like, here's a piece of paper. And that's it. That's all he would say. That was the quest. You'd have to check your quest and it just says, a guy gave you some paper. Doesn't even tell you if it's mail. Doesn't even tell you who it goes to. It's not even in an envelope for you to check to see if it's addressed to anyone. This dude just handed you a piece of paper, and that was it. Then you just had to go figure it out. Talk to just random NPCs. Oh, man, I remember when they used to do... Uh, so we're going to register this. We're just going to say bring it on so I can start killing and stuff. Okay, so there we go. Uh, I guess I'm registered now, so I just have to kill six of these. Yeah, so that's how it was. So here we go. Uh, so you can see there's also graphics on here, but a lot of this stuff is going to be in the chat box. I've added the graphics to make it for a better video, like it says the miss and the three damage. Um, but you can see here in the chat box, all these things are going by, where my parry skills are going up, my evasion skills going up, my knife skills, or dagger skills should be going up as well. Um, I'm losing to this thing. No, not really, but I'm taking damage. Uh, hurry up and kill this thing, please. So you gain very little bits of skill points. There, I gained 300, which is not what you should be gaining. So the experience points, I think, is going to be three times. So for an even match, I think you'd normally gain 80 
experience. So 80 to 100, or maybe it's between 80 to 120, depending. So that's why it's 300. I think I'm going to do three times experience is what I have it set to. Maybe it was like 3.5, maybe it is 80. Now I think even match was 100. Um, and then IT is 200. Decent challenge is 150, or tough is 150. So, yeah, so we're at three times the uh, experience. And then I chained, I actually changed something. Uh, there, so I'm level two, so we'll just keep going. I'm going to kill six of these. Probably going to end up killing 12 of these, and we'll just talk about cool stuff. Um, so this is basically what it looks like. This is going to be the game. Now, I say heavily modded. And let's be, be creative. Uh, that, that is really what it is that I do want from this. Um, and I can, you know, I can just do this. I've also been looking into maybe I'll just... Because um, I'd love to be able to talk to more people for Kingdom Death. There's a lot of stuff that's cool. I'd love to talk to people, talk about strategy, stuff like that. Uh, but it, unless you get a thousand subscribers or whatever it is, I literally can't even... Um, post like this um community tabs until i get a thousand subscribers or whatever but whatever i don't that's not what whatever that has no mean bother to me but um maybe i could just go live on this because this game you could play this game five or six hours and not accomplish anything <laughs> that's just the type of game it was <laughs> i know that sounds ridiculous but yeah sometimes you just log in sit in Juno, or sit in, um, so there, I just finished, I got 270 gil, and then 27 tabs, which is like a currency, I have no idea what they do, this is all new to me, should be fun, we'll learn together, and I got 810 experience on top of, uh, the other experience I got for leveling as normal, so I'm already level four, normally this would have taken me four hours, maybe, I don't know, as a level one, as a first player, no sub job, no anything, first time player, yeah, this probably would have taken me two or three hours to get to level four. Uh, so yeah, good thing we have the huge experience buff. Now, with that said, we need to find some more bees. Huge Hornet, are these still the ones that were... Yeah, see, so now they've come down to EP. So I don't know how much longer I'll be able to get experience from these guys, but we'll keep trying, because once you can't gain experience, they're not going to count as me getting kills for them. So... That sucks. I also won't gain drops from them either. I'll gain item drops, but I won't gain crystal drops. So see where I'm getting these wind, wind crystals? I'm only You only get those if the thing you killed gives you experience. Also, beastman seals. You know what? I don't even know if beastman seals are going to do anything. And I don't think I'm going to be able to use them. Because those what those beastman seals were for, they were like a currency for getting party content. And then you'd fight something with two or three people. Uh, maybe six people, depending on what it was. But it'd be a little instance thing, and then you'd get drop rates based on randomness. <laughs> um, so I don't even think I'm going to be able to do that, because I'm playing with myself. Now, the other thing is... The reason why I say this is going to be modded, and it's going to let me be creative, which is what I really wanted. I'm going to mod this game. Because it's a private server, I have access to everything. I can change anything I want. I don't know if any of the quests are done. There's a lot of things I just don't know what are even going to be in this game. But, as I said, I'll be able to change it. So, to make it more entertaining, now there's things in this game called Notorious Monsters, which had ridiculous spawn timers. <laughs> like, some of them wouldn't spawn... Uh, some took weeks to spawn. Those were like H&Ms. Um, those huge Notorious Monsters, I forget what they were called. But some of them took weeks to spawn... Uh, you'd get one a week, like the normal, normal rate for a normal NM was probably like an hour to two hours at low levels. Then it would be two to three hours as, you know, because level 10, level 20s would be two to four hours. Level 30 and plus gear would be like four to five, six hours on a respawn. But uh, they're all over and I can edit their drop pools. Um, and, as I said, some stuff I'm just going to be blocked out of. I'm not going to be able to do it. Uh, a good example would be Astral Rings. There's a really good ring that is really easy to get. Um, you just do BCNM, like, 20, which is really easy. 
Uh, you used to be able to do it with two ninjas. I remember I used to do it with two ninjas. Maybe you'd sp you'd spend like th uh, you'd do three ninjas. I think two or three ninjas. I think it was the bat one. Yeah, it was the bat one. Uh, there was another one, a jelly one, that you also did with ninjas. I think that was one for a race and something else. Um, but anyway, uh, that's pretty much how you would make money or get the drop that you needed. You'd just find three people, you'd do those things, and you'd get these awesome drops. Now, those are the, that drop's going to be locked out to me, but I can edit the drop pool of another monster, and we can hunt monsters. So what I'm planning on doing here is crafting and hunting notorious monsters... Uh, I've seen, you know, a lot of, like I said, I think this game is way ahead of its time, and I think it actually will play good to this. It's basically going to be a sandbox game for me. I'm going to be able to change it however it is I want to make it more entertaining. I can even change the where something spawns, fight harder monsters. There's one of the Beastman Seals I was talking about. Um, I probably leveled. I'm waiting. I'm sure the graphic will come up. Let's see. So here's what I've gotten drops, these crystals, pots of honey, adventure coupon, I don't remember what that's for, I don't even know if the quest is implemented, insect wings, beastman seals. Um, I think it looks like I have my inventory to auto sort. Yes, so when it enters my inventory, it's automatically sorting for me. That is apparently something you need to enable. This game doesn't even auto-sort stuff. When it came out, you wouldn't even be able to auto-sort your own stuff. Stuff would just drop in your inventory and it might clog up your inventory. I literally need 53 experience. I'm going to just kill this worm uh, and then we'll go back to town. So, there. Okay, so let's head back to town. <laughs> I'm now level six. Now, oh, I should have killed another bee. Oh, well. Uh, so, let's just go back to town. I'll just go back to this way. Alright, so let's look for another spawn point. Or home point, I mean, so we can get that. So we can warp to one another. I think it was over here. Yeah, even I don't remember these towns... 100% um there's the explorer move uh here's the home so at least we'll just go to the mod house I'll show you what the mod house was so the mod oh there's the home point great we'll register this home point there we go it's registered um and these are the houses these are your mod houses this is where you would keep all your gear and stuff So then you have your little Moogle friend here. He's going to give me some kind of cutscene. Welcome to your Mog House or whatever. Blah, 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 blah. Tell you all about your Mog House. Uh, basically, this is where you just stored everything. Um, and you could get mail here. When you sold stuff on the auction house, this would be... Oops, I don't know what I said. I'm just pressing X button as fast as possible. What am I doing? Hold <laughs> Stop. I don't care about any of it. I got it. Thanks. Thanks. Good. Yeah, I'm sure. Good. Spin. Alright. Yeah, good luck. Okay. So then, yeah. So this is, you can see here, oops, I'm gonna have to readjust where I put the uh, camera. Yeah, it looks a little bit better. So then you have all these things here for all the kinds of storage. Now when I played, it used to just say box safe storage. Um... I think I had a Mog Wardrobe when I played. I think I had one. Then Delivery Box, Change Jobs, and then... I don't even know what Open Mog means. Oh, you can let people come into your Mog House. That was just added right around the time when I quit. So yeah, all this other stuff, awesome to me. Especially this Mog Wardrobe. I, this was not a thing, I think, when I played. I think this is something that lets you set your gear... Um, leave your gear inside your Mog House yet still wear it outside, which is amazing uh, because it used to just carry around gear all the time, especially with equipment macro swapping. You'd be lucky if you had 10 available spots to do anything when you left 
whenever he went to go level or went to go do anything. Um, so that is uh, Final Fantasy XI. I think it's going to be a great game. I think it's a sandbox-like game. I think it will make great fun just to watch, to, pay, to just sit and do this journey of watching me fail and hunt NMs for hours and watching me rage as nothing drops because the drop rates were horrible. Hence why I started off as a thief, because I'm going to need every drop I can get to get money. How much money did I walk away with? Of 280 bucks, 280 gil, that's not enough to buy anything. Uh, it's going to be such a struggle. I think it's going to be fun. Like I said, there's lots of um, playthroughs I've seen of video games on, on YouTube that they're just these sandbox games that you can go on forever and ever, and then people mod them and they bring them back. I think the same thing could be with this. I've never seen anybody even try this on YouTube, so maybe they no one does it because it's a stupid idea. So I'll learn that too. But I think it's going to be a great idea. <laughs> last Famous last words. Um, I don't know. I think it's going to be fun, and that's all I really want to do anyway, is just share awesome, fun stuff with uh, the world just to, I think the more entertaining it is just to watch people have fun, hang out, have fun. And this is a way for me to do that. It's a way for me to, you know, maybe go live on YouTube, go live on stuff and just play around and have fun. And then obviously I'll cut together and I'll design whole episodes around doing cool stuff, going on hunts or whatever, finding the exact notorious monster I need, crafting gear. That should be fun. <laughs> so again, if this isn't something that anybody would ever want to watch, I'll just stop doing it. But I think it could be interesting. So thank you so much. It's always so humbling. And I'll see you maybe, perhaps, in the next episode. <laughs>